Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous, and here's her story. Hi, Ollie. I wrote for the video you did on the narcissist fabricates evidence against you. I appreciate your feedback, and it made me realize a few things. I wrote another letter with more information on that subject, but I may send that at a later time since it involves a family member of mine also. This letter is touching on more of the abuse I endured from my ex and what eventually led me to leave him for good. On Thanksgiving one year, I asked, I asked my ex to come with me to my family's house for Thanksgiving, and he agreed. Well, I got distracted from all the cooking that I was doing and lost track of time and then let him know we were leaving in about 15 minutes. I figured it would be enough time, but he was out in the garage working. He got mad and said he wasn't going because I didn't give him enough notice so he, could, so he could get ready. I pleaded with him for a while and he finally came around and took a shower and got ready. He could tell I was a little frazzled because we were running late now, but I didn't complain or anything. As we were driving, he said that I didn't know how to drive when needing to be somewhere in a hurry. He insisted we stop and I let him drive, but I declined and said that it would be fine. He then pointed out that I should try to get in front of people when coming to a red light, but I said I didn't want to do that because oftentimes people try to race me so I don't get in front of them. So I figure why bother? Well, that set him off and he started screaming, bullshit, you're so full of shit, screaming at me for 10 to 20 minutes. I was so shocked I couldn't understand why you would get so angry at me over that and throw such a huge tantrum over it. The screaming stopped just a minute or two before we got to my uncle's house. When we got inside, my aunt could see I was disturbed about something and asked what was wrong. I broke down in tears and ran to the bathroom. I stayed in there at, until I had cried it out. My narc ex got so mad that I made a scene that he just left. After I came out, I realized he was gone. He didn't take the car, just walked off. My dad eventually went to go find him, but he refused to come back. I ate with my family, mortified and embarrassed over the whole ordeal. He eventually came back after a while, and we went home. He told me that it was my fault. I should, I should have given him more advance notice, and that I wasn't thinking about him. Driving with him was always a horrible experience. I wasn't allowed to listen to music. He would turn off the radio every time he was with me. He said he we should use, use the time to talk. But the talking was always him berating me over something or silence because I would be too upset to say anything after being talked down to or yelled at. He also said music was bad for the mind and I shouldn't listen to it. But whenever he felt like listening to music, then it was perfectly fine. We can only do certain things on his terms, it seemed. Let me get back to what happened with the family when he's meeting them. He was establishing his dominance over you and the entire family. He was basically, he was basically giving a shit test to see what your family would tolerate, what they would put up with, and how strong of a family base you have. So he was testing his boundaries. He was, he, he was putting out like a shit test to see how much shit your family will take and your family will allow you to take. That's what all that was about. I used to go home for lunch on my lunch breaks at work, but I didn't want to do that for too long because my lunches were really 30-minute put-down sessions by him. I ended up going back to work depressed. Looking back, I realized he was doing that on purpose. He was doing all of it on purpose. I ended up going back to work depressed, looking oh wait. He was deliberately sabotaging my career because he couldn't because he couldn't keep a job. One time I was trying to study for an interview for a promotion and he kept telling me I didn't need to study and that if it, was, if it was my destiny to get the job, then I would get it. I knew that was ridiculous, but he wouldn't leave me alone. There were other times I had interviews and he would start fights with me the night before, knowing I had an interview the next morning. He never resolved conflicts that night either. It was always the next day that he would come around or be back to normal again. After I barely got any sleep from the fighting, I finally did get promoted after we broke up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you're, you're basically you're living with, you know, this guy, you're living with a, a, another woman in a man's body. 
all this all this sabotage and shit, all that stuff. That's something jealous girlfriends do to each other. My coworkers noticed a change in my emotional state and told me I needed to leave my boyfriend. I should have listened to them sooner. More and more days I was coming in depressed because we'd be up late fighting. I always thought it was important to resolve conflicts before going to bed, but this never happened with the narc. He had no respect for the fact I had to get up early and go to work to support it. Not only does he have no, no respect for it, he depends on it in order for him to start the fight. It's dependent on his tactics that you have to get up. That's why he's doing it, to attack you at your most vulnerable. Many nights I'd be up to one, two in the morning just fighting or being lectured at. At what? Lectured for, what is this jobless loser lecturing anybody about? And then tossing and turning the rest of the night, I got very little sleep with him. On weekends, when I tried to make up for sleep, he would come in and bother me. So nice. He got all the sleep he wanted, but I was allowed so little. And they love, narcs love to sleep, fuck with you in your sleep. They love to deprive you of sleep. I never woke up refreshed when I was with him. I always woke up depressed, shaken, or disturbed. He couldn't keep a job because of his attitude and got fired from every job he's ever had. But it wasn't because he ended anything he did wrong. He would always say it was that ma that the manager was a jerk or something, though he did not tell me about the time where he was asked to fix a door on a bus. Though he, wait, he did tell me about a time where he was asked to fix a door on a bus. Nobody else could fix the door, but he managed to fix it. When they asked him what he did, he refused to tell them. They fired him over that and for good cause. Like, this guy is so so insecure. He was so afraid that by revealing certain things he knew, then other people would know and that would make him less valuable. That, that is how a woman, that is, I'm telling you, this is a woman in a man's body. This is how, this is how narcissistic women act. This is a woman in a man's body. He didn't take into consideration that being a team player is important to just to just about every company. The couple of months he did have a job, he turned even to even more of a monster than he was before for some reason. Right, because he was resentful and la he's resentful that he had to have a job. He's lazy and didn't want to do it. So he's probably becoming a monster. So you would just tell him to quit. He fought with me almost every day during those two months before he was fired. Exactly. He wanted you to tell him to just quit the job. It's manipulative. You should have seen his resume. He had two pages of jobs. When he said I he should take when I said he should take some of the jobs off because it because it can look bad, he refused and then wonders why nobody calls him for an interview. He loved to play the silent treatment on me and refused physical contact whenever we fought. Like if I tried to give him a hug to calm him down, he would push me away and say, don't touch me. But then would say, if you feel like doing something, just do it. One day when I wanted to give him a hug, one day when I wanted to give him a hug. So he tried to encourage me to do things, but later on he would get mad at me over it. He would also go sleep in another room at night after we fought or just stay up really late and refuse to speak to me. He helicoptered me all the time too. On days where I thought I could get some free time to myself on the weekends, in the mornings when I got up first, a rarity since I was always so tired, he would get up immediately and start griping at me about how lazy, how I'm so lazy, and that I should be doing dishes or cleaning first thing in the morning instead of drinking coffee and browsing Facebook or whatever. I wasn't even allowed a few damn minutes to myself. Also, he made fun of me one day when he said I was tired after I got up. He said, tired? How can you be tired? You just got up. You should say you're still waking up. What the fuck does it matter how I say it? Tired is tired. This is like a nagging mother. Are you seeing this is a woman in a man's body? Everything about him is jealousy that you're going to find a better deal somewhere else. It's a jealous woman.
you're married to a jealous, lazy woman in a man's body. Or that's who you were dating. One time I was connecting a garden hose to the spigot and he came out there to helicopter me and tell me that I was doing it wrong. That's just one example. Any idiot knows how to connect a water hose to a spigot. I told him that he made me feel like a child and that he's not my father. He's not trying to be your father. He was trying to be your mother. But he never listened to me. He constantly pointed out any little mistake I made and told me that I was clumsy and didn't pay attention. This story reads exactly like stories I get about narcissistic mothers. If I made any kind of mistake, he would berate me mercifully over it. Mercifully. I can never say that word. Mercilessly. <sighs> Fat tongue. He owned, his own family even told him one day that he was like a bulldog and he just didn't let up on something. He took it as a compliment without realizing what they were trying to tell him. Even though, even he... He even told me that I needed to digest things and deal with them. And that's why he would bring things up all the time. But it was completely unnecessary to do so. He had me on eggshells, never knowing when the next blowout would be. I had so much anxiety over doing the wrong, doing the wrong thing, saying the wrong thing, or making a mistake that ended up screwing things up because of it. Like one day he said I would push the knife down too far in the blender and the blades would catch it. I was making smoothies with a cheap blender. That never happened to me before until he said that. The next morning I was so nervous about it that it happened exactly as he said. The knife caught the blades and smoothie went everywhere. He got up, started screaming at me saying, see, I told you. He starts telling me what a fuck up I am. If you, have you done and you done that a million times before? I guarantee you he bent the blades up a little so it would hit the knife. I guarantee you that's what he did. I guarantee you that's what he did. But I didn't say anything to to him when he put a can of spray paint in the oven and left it there. <laughs> that's brilliant. And when he went to and when he went to get it, it exploded all over the kitchen. Of course, of course not, because I'm an understanding human being who knows people make mistakes. Instead of screaming at him and telling him how stupid he is, I asked him if he was okay, because that's what normal people do. Oh, who puts a fucking aerosol can in an oven? Also, he never fully cleaned up the mess. I had to repaint part of the kitchen. He made me feel like shit all the time, like nothing. He could have killed somebody with that. I'd literally go out on the lawn and lie on the grass after we fought. This drove him crazy after a while, and I couldn't understand why I did that either. But now, looking at my childhood, I realize why. When I was little, I remember an incident where my stepfather came into the tiny room that he was building for us. Seriously, this room was the size of a closet. My sister and I were to get the tiny room and our younger half-brother was get the larger room just for him. He was the golden child. Well, he starts kicking me around for no reason and forced me to stand on my head for a while on bare wooden floors. Then he grabs me by my hair and picks me up by it after I fell down, ripping, a chunk, ripping out a chunk of my scalp. Then he kicks me and tells me not to get up. As I'm laying there on the hardwood floor, he spits a loogie into my face and forces me to lie there and take it while he stared at me. I can remember the smell of it to this day. He made me feel worthless and like nothing. I would revert to these childlike moments with my narc ex because he would make me feel the same way and I was doing what I thought would appease him. One day after a blowout, I came crawling into the room like a worm, like a worthless worm that I felt like trying to get him to forgive me, even though I did nothing wrong. He really liked that and got a good laugh out of it. I know it sounds weird and crazy. I remember having a lot of stomach pains when I was with him. When he started lecturing me, my stomach would tie up in knots. One time he told me about this kid that he knew that would throw up every time he saw him. He said the kid was egotistical, but I knew why the kid did that. 
because that's how he made me feel too. And what kind of kid is egotistical? Just more projection on his part. I started to realize after a while that maybe he didn't love me because of his constant complaining. I even told him that one day, told him that one day and asked why he wanted to be with me because he was obviously unhappy. But he insisted he loved me. Well, that certainly wasn't true. I know that. He made me so miserable and depressed that I was suicidal. One night I took a bunch of painkillers and some sleeping pills, hoping to die in my sleep after we got into yet another fight after his put downs and lecture, lecturing. Luckily I didn't die, but I eventually told him how he was making me feel over the phone before I drove home from work one day. I didn't tell him about my suicide attempt, just that I was feeling suicidal and depressed because he was always putting me down. He said he was sorry and sounded like he was genuinely concerned that he would work on treating me better. But shortly after he got home, I got home, started screaming at me over something ridiculous again and said, I don't care if you kill yourself. Go drive your car off a bridge. Go kill yourself right now. Ollie, that should sent me spiraling. At first, I was about to take him up on his offer. I was about to grab my keys and just do that. But I have a daughter who needs me and for some reason I got angry. I got so fucking angry that just a couple hours ago he was so apologetic and now is telling he is telling me his suicidal girlfriend to go kill herself. How can someone encourage anyone to kill themselves, especially someone they are supposed to love? How much could this how much of a monster could someone be? He wants you to he wanted you to try it. I guarantee you if you left with your keys he would have called the cops and had you committed. The narcissist always has a plan. When it comes to my daughter, he was controlling with her too. He tried to con convince me that she she didn't need to, to self-cath. My daughter has bladder issues and is unable to fully empty her bladder. She's had this issue since birth and has always needed a cath, I guess a catheter. When I tried to argue with him that she has had that she's had at least two surgeries on her bladder and sees a urologist at least once a year and that I know my, I know what my daughter needs since I raised her, he wouldn't hear it. He just insisted that he knew she could control her bladder. This could have led to a bladder infection. After a while, he realized she could not control her bladder and had to use her calf again. After so much frustration of me trying to tell him that she needed the calf, he finally realized when he watched her pee. Oh, God. But that wasn't enough for him. He forced her to use just one catheter, which is extremely un... Why would you allow this on your daughter? Which is extremely unhygienic and could have caused an infection as well. He started to say that she didn't need the calf as often as she did. And then, and then it was... And then it was, she needed to cath all the time. When we were at the urologist's office, he was yelling at the doctor. I had to pull him out as we were leaving. He then screamed at me for a good while, for a good while saying how angry he was that I didn't defend him. Well, I think the urologist would know more than someone who hasn't had any medical training about my daughter's bladder, should, how, about how my daughter's bladder should function. He was also banned from my daughter's school because he would always fight with the staff at our meetings. I think the school was really happy when I stopped bringing him. The final straw came when I was in the kitchen with my daughter and noticed a big red mark on her face. I asked her what it was and she broke down crying, telling me that my narc ex threw a shoe at her face for no reason other than she got up to go use the bathroom. I texted him that night and told him that I just wasn't happy in the relationship and I think we should go our separate ways. I told him we could take time putting, take his, told him, I told him he could take his time packing, but my daughter and I would be staying with our father for a while. Well, when we got back and, well, when he got back and saw that I was serious, he started screaming and yelling at me. I just went to go take a shower to get away from him, but he came in and started punching at my shower curtains and yelling at me. I was pretty terrified. I packed my things and my daughter and I went to my fa our father's house. He threatened to sue me and tear all the thing and tear up all the things he did for me around the house, like the water filter and flooring in one of the rooms. He asked me to come back so he could present me with a list of services he did for me and how much I owed him. 
He lived, he lived with me on and off for three years and I supported him. He tried to tell me that what he did for me was worth, worth more than rent and food, which was bullshit. I refused. I instead went to the police department and filed a restraining order. When filling out the paperwork, the clerk remarked how she couldn't see my face in the driver's license. And that never happened before. It was some, it was some sort of, it was some sort of glare. I took that as an omen. I knew he would do something to me if I went through with the restraining order, but it was too late. The paperwork was filed and eventually served to him. He got angry and I told him not to worry about it, that I was dropping it and that I was just upset. I tried to handle the situation as calmly, as intelligently as I could. He said everything in the restraining order was a lie. Also, besides throwing a shoe at my daughter's face, he grabbed her and picked her up by the neck one day. I didn't know about uh, I didn't know about that until we got until after we left and that was and that was in the restraining order as well. He tried to tell me that he gently tossed the shoe at her and it didn't hit her in the face. She was clearly bruised in the face. I didn't believe a word of it. He also told me that if he had gone through that if I had gone through with the restraining order, that he would wait a while and then shoot and kill me when I least expected it. My dad said it was just an empty threat, but I don't think it was. He told me stories of where he would dress in black and put on a ski mask and beat people up that didn't agree with him, usually co-workers or managers. Since they didn't know who he was, they couldn't pin it on him. It took him over two or three weeks to leave my house. After he left, he took a bunch of my stuff with him, but he did pay me back for it at least. He said he was so distraught when he was packing that he wasn't paying attention. Yeah, right. I just think he was, he was ho just hoping I wouldn't notice. Admitting to myself that he never loved me was hard, but at the same time, it should be, have been pretty, pretty obvious. His idea of love was doing things for him. He even told me that early in our relationship, he complained that I wasn't showing him my love and that if I loved him, I would go and clean his apartment. This was an absurd thought because he lived an hour away at the time and I didn't have a key to his apartment. And besides, that just sounds creepy. So he always told me that he that to show love was through actions, basically just doing whatever he says. He also tried to tell me that words were meaningless and I shouldn't take his insults and blow up so seriously. He even said that I was lucky he didn't beat me like the men in Colombia would do to their wives. Gee, thanks. Oh, he's Colombian? That makes, that makes sense. That makes sense because Colombians are some of the laziest men on the planet with the most Latino bra bravado. I just felt like he wanted me to be a robot. I even told him to just get a damn robot and get over it. He would never accept that I was my own person with my own thoughts and way of doing things. Everything had to be his way. I had to be an extension of himself. It has been over two years since we broke up and I thought my life would be so much better and easier since he was gone for good but I was instead met with insomnia and depression. I had a hard time letting him go, but he really did a number on my head. I kept talking to him now and then and tried to remain friends, but that was a terrible idea. I should, I should have gotten some counseling or help, but my daughter is my priority and I put her into counseling instead. She was depressed and also being bullied at school. I think I'm finally moving on and getting better now, and I'm going no contact with him. After dealing with narcissistic abuse, it can take a long time to recover. You're dealing with post-traumatic stress from it. After dealing with anxiety and PTSD all my life from my childhood, I fell right into it again. I'm really glad for your channel, as it has helped me understand what I went through, what I was dealing with. I'm a lot more cautious now and decided to stop dating. I really don't have any interest in relationships anymore as I'm afraid that it will happen to me again. 
I'm instead focusing on raising my daughter and being there for her. She's doing a lot better now, too. Thanks again, Anonymous. <coughs> what you have to realize about this guy, okay, is you were dating, you were dating a woman in a man's body. You were dating a, a jealous mother in a man's body. Because your story with this guy is exactly how a jealous mother would treat, treats their daughters. This almost competition, this cycling off from this, this cutting off from other people, the sabotage, the, 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 the lack of the taking your sleep away. That is, a, that is a narcissistic mother thing to do. All of it. This guy thinks, makes, thinks like a narcissistic mother. Thinks, acts, his actions are of a narcissistic mother, not a man. Not a man. I, I'm surprised you let him get away. Like, why would you even have considered dropping that restraining order after he hit your daughter in the face? So you need to, you're right, you do need to get into therapy because you need to get to the root of why you accepted this for so long. From a guy who's not, he can't even hold a job just abuses you at every point and you need to understand that first fight you had when he was meeting your family he was shit testing everybody to see what he could get away with that was your red flag you should have cut it right there and then because he was seeing what he could get away with and obviously it was a lot now, you said your father went after him when that was at your actual father or your stepfather. Because if it was your stepfather, the guy who kicked you and did all that, well, you know why this guy felt so so easy to abuse you the way, the way he did for so long. Know your red flag when you see it. Then when the narcissist tests you or they're testing you for a reason, the narcissist shit tests your family early to see what they can get away with. And that's what happened. And you were dealing with a narcissistic mother in a man's body. So I hope that helps. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for another story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up a Skype chat, phone call, have a private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video for someone who can't afford it and needs help, or just want to sponsor the channel in general, help the company grow, keep the lights on, the bills paid, because that's always awesome. And as well, because this channel is still sponsored 100% by contributions from all of you. So you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. And if for some reason you're still unclear, wait for the instructional video link to pop up on the screen at the end of this video to walk you through all of that. Please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.